So how many of you watching this uh, programming like to be number one? Well, we've got somebody here who likes to be number eight. Why does someone like to be number eight? We'd like to welcome to Groningen, to Eurosonic, to Boomer's Music Meets Tech, Abhishek San. Abhishek, welcome. Hi. Nice to meet you, Ralph. How nice are you Nice to today? see you. So, number eight has a particular yes. relevance for yourself. Absolutely. It's the name of your company. Yes. And so, tell us what number eight is and does and what you want it to grow to become. Yes. Number eight is an application mm -hmm. that today uses the sensors present in your smartphone and uses that to understand the situation or the context for you. And then, based on the situation, it will recommend music for you automatically by auto-curating playlists. So give me an example. Let's say, for example, so, I'm here in yep. a Eurosonic, Absolutely. Nudeslach, and yes. I'm walking around here. Yes. What, what would your number eight do? So today, for example, the number eight playlist, it will actually show a, a chill playlist or a working playlist, because it says, okay, it's a Friday, you should be at work. Right. But, and so these are playlists that it auto-curates for you. So if you're working out at the gym, for example, later on in the day, or if you're going to sleep at night, it will do this for you automatically. So does the company specialize in auto curation construction? It is actually focusing on the technology of understanding the sensor data that is coming. Uh -huh. And sensor data, it can be from location, activity, uh, date time, all these things that are there in a smartphone today, but we just don't use it. Huh. We just count our footsteps or we just count our heart rate. But we can do a lot better if you, you know, start making sense of this. And that's what number eight's core technology is, really. So how did you come to this? I mean, this is a really interesting, looking at colloquial relevance yes. and contextual relevance. Correct. One of the most important <laughs> elements of the whole notion of mobile technology yes. and things that really appeal to what we call screenagers. Mm -hmm. So tell us how you came about this. Well, it's, I'll make a long story short. Please. The short story is I was working out at the gym Right. And uh, I figured, you know, I'm trying to figure through my playlist to find out, okay, give me something uplifting and motivating to right. have a good workout. But I just ended up using my sweaty hands, not finding anything, and listening to the same thing that I usually listen to. That's when I asked, why can't our smartphones today, with all this technology, right. why can it not do some work for us? Right. Instead of us manually going through picking playlists and doing this and that, it needs to do some work for us at the end of the day. And that's where I started working on this, and this eventually turned up being my master's thesis. And now it's on the App Store, so people can go in and download it. That's the beta version. Wow, so really what evolved as a master's thesis yeah, it was, has devolved into a business. Yeah. And what's your business model for number eight? Well, I have two possible business models right. that I have in mind. Oh, good. So let's go to, this, let's go to one of the slides yep. we can pick up. The, right. first, uh, the, the first model that we have is fairly simple. We want to license the technology that we have directly to music content providers as Spotify. And, and Spotify. what would you say the USP of the technology, the unique selling proposition of unique the technology? Unique selling point is these providers can then offer context of our services wow. to their users. Contextual relevance. The second model Very is important. quite interesting is we position ourselves in the same way as we have the application today. We basically license the content from the providers, but we show contextual ads on the screen lock. So for example, if you're playing a song, so let's say we're playing the song, what will happen on the screen, imagine this screen paper being an ad. Just the same way that we transfer uses wallpaper uh -huh. ads. This will be an ad of Nike, Gatorade, or... Uh, but it ties accounts. into the contextual activity. Exactly. That ties is brilliant. Contextual. It ties into the contextual activity. That is that really is, interesting. Uh, so, so it's targeted. smart contextual linkage. Absolutely. Without being obtrusive. Right. Because, you know, these banner pop-up ads, are, we don't like it. No one likes Correct. them. Correct. And how to utilize what we have on a mobile device, because the infrastructure is limited. So did you develop this for both Android and iOS? Unfortunately, it's for iOS only uh -huh. today because I only have an iPhone. But you will, but you yeah, will be developing Android, been you have a lot to do of that? Feedback, you know, hey, yeah, can I use an Android version? I was like, okay, yes, definitely. And yeah. what made you decide to come and present this here at Eurosonic? Why oh. here? <laughs> you know, it's a funny story because uh, I knew someone from a contact of mine. She said, hey, uh, we said you should really go to this because I think your idea is cool. And I applied for this on the last day, December 11th, I applied. I was like, hey, why not? My thesis is done. I have some time to apply for her. And uh, yeah, I get to meet you. And, and uh, you're based in Delft. I'm based in Delft And right that's now. where you do your research, your development, yep. your structuring. In my room in Delft. <laughs> in your room in Delft. Yeah. That's, that's where and are you on. going to be building a team to be able to yes, take this further, absolutely. expand it? 
Absolutely. So if you go back to the slides, I mean, one of the core visions of mine is I have worked in the mobile industry for a long time. I worked at Apple, Palm, Blackberry. I've worked for these for about six plus years before starting my thesis. My two main visions are I love mobile, and I think there's a lot of future in mobile, and the discovery aspect given up where I've traveled. Very important. So my co-founder has to agree with these visions, and then I Who's want Who's your co-founder? I don't have one right now. Oh, so it's basically you. I'm doing everything. Right. So the application that you see from the first line of code to everything has been me so far. Right, so, so the, the main thesis of number eight is contextually relevant content and basically looking at sentient data around you Absolutely. to make sure that you capture that Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. So you focus on the moment because too much of music recommendation or any recommendation for that matter happens about what has been done in the past. If you look at mu movies, oh, you've listened to, uh, well, you've watched this movie in the past, so we're going to recommend this for you. No, that's not, that's not what I agree upon. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Fantastic. Any more uh, visual One thing uh, that I can show you is, well, the first beta test that we ran for the research was, it was a test between August 27th to September 5th. And, you know, at first you thought, okay, this is the 10-day period. And we told the users that you don't have to continue using the application at the end of the period. You can right. stop. What's interesting thing, though, is that at the end of the period, people still kept using it. So there was traction in build without have, having me to tell them, okay, please use it. So this showed me that, okay, there is something that we can really work on. Right. And uh, yeah, it is, the goal is again to simplify something that is too complex for casual listeners. I'm not a music fan who would go crazy over an artist. I'm an average listener, I'll be honest with you, all right? But I think technology plays a key role in when it works for us and does something useful than just, yeah, it's showing us numbers. Exactly and that's nice. where the key uh, beauty, and I solved it for myself, eh? This is initially solved so I can listen to good music. So Abhishek, tell me, what, it, what do you see as the development path for the platform? Correct. What are you working on that brings in an even wider um, targeting and uh, accuracy mm -hmm. of this contextual linkage. Right. So what we do today is a uh, is field in artificial intelligence, it's called fuzzy logic. So yeah. what this allows you to do is it allows you to model between, I'll talk like a geek right now for two, for a couple of seconds. Traditional Boolean logic is between zero and one. What f fuzzy logic allows you to do is that it allows you to give a sense of uncertainty. Right. And once you have uncertainty, it opens up the possibilities of this situation can be this or this or this. And once that happens, you can build an algorithm based on that such that it gives you a lot more choices without you having to hard code things. Right. And, and the music recommendation is really built on, I want to discover, not just what I've listened to in the past, but what I want to listen to right now. Right. And that's the core, core belief that I have is, is really important. As you get into this Facebook feed of personalized, personalized, I'm saying no, let's stay contextual. Contextualized. Absolutely. Absolutely. So right, the uh, the demand for contextual accuracy mm. is absolutely essential. I mean, let's just take for example, if someone uh, is a supporter of Ajax, the football club, yep. and you're at an Ajax game, you want contextual relevance within that experience. Absolutely. It doesn't make sense. So I, when I presented my paper at, in Vienna, and I was talking to the researchers there, and uh, it's more about learning from the past data sets. And when I said this, okay, you know what, imagine I come to Vienna from Amsterdam. I've been eating a lot of pasta in Amsterdam, but when I come to Vienna, I want to eat local food. So the recommendations right. I get should be localized. Absolutely right. Contextually relevant. So Abhishek, before we sign off, yes. if someone wants to make contact with you, who do they go to, what do they do? Well, you have my email, it's hi at number eight dot me. Hi it's at number eight dot me. me, and you can download the app store. It's available for iOS today. It's called Number Eight, and this is my email and this is my contact. You can always say hi. And you looking for? I'm looking for a potential co-founder in the field of data science, AI, and I'm looking for possible partnerships, as I said before, with music partners. So it's Spotify or SoundCloud. If anyone has connections, links, just hit me up. Yeah. Very, very interesting. You've touched on a really important nerve and prospect. 
for mobile and for screen agents. Abhishek, thanks for coming in to you. Music Meets Tech at Eurosonic. Thanks a lot, Ralph. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Okay.